Okay, good morning. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to give a talk here in Natal. I thank you very much, the organizers. I'm going to talk about integrable quantum tunneling models. My talk will be divided in five parts. In the introduction, I will briefly present some experimental results that motivate this study. Then in the second section, I will discuss the two-site Bosch-Herbert component, which is a very simple case. And then I will expand this result, and in section three, I will present integrable multi-well tunneling model. And as an application, in section four, I will present an atomtronic switching device, which is constructed for an integrable triple well switching. And in the conclusions, I will present the brief outlook of the area. Okay, first of all, here, by integrable models, I mean quantum models that can be solved exactly by beta Ernzot methods. And I will present this later in a very, very simple example. Integrable models, they are very beautiful. They can be found in very different areas, such as statistical physics, quantum field theory, string theory, nuclear physics, condensed matter, and more recently in cold data. And here we will focus on integrable models in cold data. Advanced experimental techniques in trapping and cooling atoms provided the realizations of some integrable models in the lab. So some models, some integrable models that have been realized in the lab include the Lieb linear Bose gas that was realized by the group of David Weiss, also the superton Girardot gas, a spinner Bose gas, the one dimension of Fermi with two components, impurities, and components, this is for the group of Leonardo Falani, and there are some others. And here, most of these models, they have short range interactions, they have uh, contact interactions. And here, we want to extend this discuss discussion to include integrable models also with long range interactions, such as dipole dipole interactions. So, we will present a family of integrable multi well tunneling models. Most of them with long interaction, just the first case uh, is short range interaction, and discuss some possible, uh, possible applications. So let me here just show you two experiments that motivate this study. The first experiment was performed by the group of Marcus Obertaler in Heidelberg, where they did the direct observation of tunneling and self-trapping in two weakly linked Bose-Einstein condensates. So we have, he, we have here two condensates, and they studied what happens with the density of atoms here in red along the time, the, so this is the time of flight. Depending on the conditions, the atoms, they can tunnel, or they are trapped in one of the wells. So this was an experimental realization of tunneling and self-trapping. And in section two, we will discuss an integrable model that presents tunneling and self-trapping. Okay, another experiment was the construction of a triple well BEC transistor by the group of Dana Anderson. Basically, they proposed a dev device that consists of trapping a BEC in three specially separated wells, the source well, the gate well, and the drain well. And they showed that under certain conditions, the atoms here in the source, they can quantum mechanically tunnel to the drain via the gate. So transport dynamics of ultra cool atoms was experimentally studied in a triple well BEC transistor. And here, like an electronic transistor, this device shows a switching behavior. And uh, we want in sections three and four to discuss an integrable triple well that also exhibits a switching behavior. So this was for the motivation why we are studying this type of models. Let me now present you a very uh, probably you know, a very simple model, which is the two-site Boss-Herbert model. This is one of the simplest models. We have two wells, N1 particles in well one, N2 particles in well two. We have the standard notation. A1 destroys an atom in well one. A1 dagger creates an atom in well one, and the same for well two. So we have two wells. K is the atom-atom -atom interaction term. Delta mu is an external potential. It measures the asymmetry between the wells. And epsilon is the coupling for the tunneling. So here we destroy an atom in well one, creating well two. We destroy an atom in well two, creating well one. So this model is very, very simple. And although very simple, 
it captures very interesting physical properties. If you study, for example, the quantum dynamics, we will clearly see that this model exhibits tunneling and self-trapping in qualitative agreement with the experiment of Markus Oberthal. So this is a very simple model. For this very simple model, I want to show that it is integrable and can be solved by the big learners. I promise it's just four or five slides, and then I will return again uh, to more general uh, material. This is just to give a flavor of integrability. So to show that it is integrable, I will use a method, a very beautiful method, call it algebraic bit -ended. So I will talk about algebraic bit -ended, and uh, in a few slides I will return and make a connection with this model. In the algebraic bit -ended, we have three basic ingredients. The first ingredient is the R matrix. So this is the R matrix that we are using here. It is a four by four matrix with elements one, B, C. U is a, what you call the spectral parameter. And in these constructions, this R matrix has to be the young baxter algebra. So this is the first ingredient. We have a second ingredient, which is the so-called monodromy matrix, T here. And it has to be chosen in such a way that the young baxter algebra for the monodromy matrix is obeyed, this RTT relation. So for this, we choose the following realization of the monodromy matrix written in terms of the Heisenberg algebra. And we can show that with this choice, this monodromy matrix obeys the young baxter algebra for the monodromy matrix. So this is the second ingredient. There is a third one, which is the so-called transfer matrix, which is the trace of the monodromy matrix. So now we have the transfer matrix. Now we use the young baxter algebra, and we can show that the transfer matrix commutes for different parameters. And this, uh, with this relation, we can say that the system is integrable. So this transfer matrix will generate conserved operators for the theory. And what is the relation between this beautiful algebraic construction with three ingredients with the two-side Boss-Herbert model? We can show that the two-side Boss-Herbert model can be constructed, can be obtained from the transfer matrix by this relation if you do the following identification between the parameters of the Hamiltonian, atom-atom interaction strength, external potential, coupling for the tunneling, and the parameters that appear in this algebraic construction. So there is a connection between the Hamiltonian and the transfer matrix. And if we can solve the eigenvalue problem for the transfer matrix, we will find a solution for the Hamiltonian. So this is integrability, exact solution. So we apply the so-called algebraic bit ansatz method, which is also very beautiful. Uh, I can show you later. And in the end of the day, we arrive to these energies. These are the energies. Here, the VIs are solution to these equations. These are the so-called bit ansatz equations. So the model is integrable. You can solve it using bit ansatz equations. We have uh, each here. Each solution provides an eigenvector. I didn't write it here with these energies. And we have a finite number of solutions. One will be the ground state. The others will be the uh, excitations. And what is very beautiful in the beta answers is that we get all the energies. It's a method that it gives all the energies and not only the ground state. So if you have beta answers, you have the full spectrum. It's very powerful. OK, so we can now use this type of construction to construct integrable generalized models in this context by exploring different representations of some algebra. We can use different uh, monodromy matrix, different realizations of the monodromy matrix, or even other R matrices. As long as the young baxter algebra is obeyed, we will have integrable families of models which may be physically relevant or not. So doing this, we can construct integrable multi-well tunneling models, like an integrable triple-well, an integrable four-well, or integrable multi-well. And these models are different for the usual, usual uh, Boss-Herbert model. They are a kind of extended Boss-Herbert model. And here let me mention that it was believed for a while that it was not possible to construct integrable multi-well systems. People believe we can construct integrable uh, models with two wells or with infinite number of wells. And it was not possible to construct integrable models with three, four, or n wells. And in fact, the algebraic construction of these models is very tricky. There, it's very difficult to get uh, all conserved quantities. 
but in the end of the day, we arrive at we can do this, and we can construct, for example, integrable triple L Hamiltonians. So this is the Hamiltonian. Here we have three wells, and one particles in well one, and two particles in well two, and three particles in well three. The total number of particles is conserved. Here we have this U term, controls on site and interwell interaction between the bosons. And the T's are the coupling for the tunneling. So T1 denotes the coupling of the tunneling of particles between wells 1 and 2, and T3 between wells 2 and 3. And this model this is completely uh, is actually solvable by the beta answers for any choice of the parameters, not only for specific choices. We can also construct integrable four well rings here, four wells, and one particles in well one, and two particles in well two, and so on. Here we have again the U controlling on site and interwell interactions. We have the T's that control the tunneling of particles between wells T12, between wells 12, T23, T34, T41. Here, the, the T's are not totally independent. There is a constraint, the product T12, T34 must be equal to T23, T14. We have this constraint to have integrability. But even with this constraint, we have uh, many possibilities. We have a lot of freedom to investigate the range of anisotropic uh, uh, regime. We can extend these results and construct integrable multi-well tunneling models here for n plus m wells in terms of these sets of canonical boson operators A and B. We have the same uh, notations as before. U uh, denotes intra-well and inter-well interactions. And these models here, they are defined on complete bipartite graphs, as I will show. For particular choices of N and M, we can find particular cases, some uh, cases that we already know, and also new uh, models. For example, if we choose N equal M equal 1 in the previous Hamiltonian, we recover the two side boss Herbert. If we choose N equal 2 and M equal 1, we recover the integrable triple L Hamiltonian. Now, in the case, if we choose n equal m equal 2, we recover the integrable four well ring model. And here, uh, I just forgot to say, there is this schematic representation. The spheres represent the wells, and the bonds indicate the tunneling between the wells. So we have different, two different four wells, for example, a uh, ring model and an open four well model. We can also construct more uh, uh, higher uh, models with more wells, for example, Choosing n equal m equal 3, we have these six wells. These are all integrable models. Uh, n equal 4 and m equal 2, we have another integrable six well model. And there's another possibility, a kind of open six well model here. So far, this is was to introduce you to a family of integrable multi well models. Now, as an application, I want to discuss a triple well atomtronic switching device. So we begin with the triple well, the integrable model that I presented to you before. We have the two wells. U again uh, is the interwell and interwell interaction between the bosons. The J's are the coupling for the tunnels. J1 uh, denotes the coupling for the tunneling of bosons between wells 1 and 2. J3 between wells 2 and 3. So this is the integrable system. Now we break the integrability by uh, applying an external uh, field to wells 1 and 3. Uh, basically, we add this term to the Hamiltonian, this epsilon term here. Then we have two scenarios. The integrable case, when no external field is applied, and the, when we apply the field, epsilon is not zero, this is not integrable anymore. So this is the starting point. Then, uh, the, as I said, we have two regimes in the integrable case. In this case, the system has three degrees of freedom. So it is expected that we have three conserved, uh, independent conserved quantities. And these are here. We have the energy, the number of particles, and this charge Q here, written here, which can be interpreted as a two well subsystems containing only wells one and three. So here we have three independent operators that commute among themselves, three conserved quantities in the integrable case. So we put the external field, we break the integrability, we don't have this set of three conserved operators anymore. Q does not commute anymore. 
And so for this scenario, we want to study the quantum dynamics for these two cases to probe the conditions under which a switching behavior occurs. We have that motivation uh, that I showed before. Here, switching refers to the capacity to effectively block tunneling in one of the wells. So we begin with the integrable case, and we present the quantum dynamics for different values of the interaction parameter u. Each figure here is for a different u. All are in the integrable case, so this is the integrable scenario. No external field, the external field is zero. And here we have then the time evolution of the expectation values of the number of particles in wells, one in pink, which could be the source, in well two, here the gate in cyan, and in well three, the drain, here in blue. And we are choosing the initial condition that all particles are in well one. We have 60 particles in well one, this choice of the parameters. And what we observe is the following. We begin here, and by increasing the interaction parameter u, what we see, is that there is a decreasing of the tunneling into the gate while the frequency increases. So this here decreases until we reach a configuration where the tunneling into the gate is basically negligible. So this is in the last figure we can say, we can see that the tunneling through the gate is completely washed out. So there is no tunneling in the gate, it's switched off, and we call this situation a resonant tunneling. The particles, they tunnel between wells one and three. And this situation is a very good, and we have uh, very uh, harmonic and coherent oscillations between the, of the particles between wells one and three. And we want to use this last figure to start the next study. Lane, this is a very good picture to start to investigate now the non-integrable dynamics. And we will use the parameter epsilon, the external field, to control this resonant tunneling. So here we have the quantum dynamics now for different values of the external field. I fix now the interaction parameter u as the same as the previous figure. I use the same initial condition, all particles in well one, the same values for j. Now I just put the external field, just break the integrability. So this was the previous figure. Here this is the integrable case. Here we see that we have a switched on configuration with maximum tunneling amplitude of particles between the source and the drain. And then by uh, increasing this external field, what we see is that the amplitude of oscillation decreases. Here we have just around 30% of the original amplitude. So it decreases until we reach a switched off configuration. And what is very interesting is that we have a control of this resonant tunneling. We know how the tunneling amplitude and the frequency here in the inset varies with the external field. We not only found a resonant regime, but we also have a control of this resonant regime. We have, all, we have analytical expressions for the, for the amplitude, tunneling amplitude and tunneling frequency in terms of the parameters. And uh, we check that these analytical expressions agree very well with exact numerical results. So here I make a comparison between analytical and numerical results. In the first picture, I have the period as a function of the external field. The orange lines shows the period from the analytic expressions compared with the numerical points, which are these green crosses. And in the other figure, we have the dynamical evolution of the occupation in well one as a function of time and external field. And here these lines here are the analytical expressions, the cyan, the yellow, the pink, and the green, and the whole figure was obtained numerically. Okay, next question is, okay, it's a beautiful theoretical model, so uh, can we uh, investigate the possibility of a, po a physical realization of this theoretical switching device? Is it possible? To do this, we make a connection with an existing work of La Haya, Chilman Fau, and Luis Santos, mesoscopic ensembles of polar bosons in triple wells. They have this PRL, they also have a very nice review. Uh, we also use it. And in this work, they uh, uh, pro, uh, uh, use this Hamiltonian here. They introduce this extended three-site Boss-Herbert model. 
And what we showed, we showed that our integrable triple model is linked, it's a particular case of this extended three side boss Herbert model proposed by Luis Santos and Tilman Fau and Lahai. So, uh, what is this model? This general model models dipole dipole interactions, DDI, and tunneling between uh, neighboring sites for ultra cold dipolar bosons with large dipole moments, such as chromium and dysprosium. So, this is the Hamiltonian. U0 here is the coupling for on site interactions. And they derived this and these results from contact and DDI interactions, the on-site interactions. We also have the UIJ, which characterized dipole-dipole interactions between particles on different sites. And the Js, J1 and J3, are the coupling for the tunneling between neighboring wells. So we can make a connection with this model. We can connect this three-site Boss-Herbert model with our integrable model. Uh, when we uh, set U13 equals to U0, this extended Boss Herbert model uh, is integrable. It, it can be reduced and connected with our model by these relations. So, this is the extended Boss Herbert model, and this is our integrable model. We have to do an identification between the parameters. So, this is a condition of integrability, and there is a condition of experimental feasibility. So, uh, in their paper, they discussed experimental feasibility of n dipolar bosons polarized by a sufficiently large external field. And basically, they show that the condition to realize it in the lab is that U12 must be equal to U23, must be equal to alpha13. Alpha U13, this alpha here, depends only the, on the ratio of the distance between the wells and the width of the Gaussian cloud along the x direction. And they show that to be feasible, in addition, alpha must be between 4 and 8 to be able to be realized in the lab. So then here I present a schematic representation of a possible trap geometry, which is the following. You have here three parallel la lasers in blue, crossed by a transverse beam here in green. And here the Seeger shapes are red here, represent a dipolar back trapping in this triple well potential. Here the arrows uh, are in this direction. We have an external field here in this z direction. And here this transverse beam performs the function of the external field that makes this uh, tilting in the potential. So in principle, the model can be realized in the lab. We also have uh, uh, provided some numbers that we obtain it uh, from the derivation of the parameters. And these results were published in uh, communication physics this uh, last year. Uh, we also were invited to uh, contribute to the blog uh, in the Nature Research and Materials Eng Engineer, telling a bit the story of this, the paper. And we also were invited to contribute to International Women's Day in the nature community. Now I'm uh, going to the concluding remarks. We have introduced the family of integrable multi-well uh, models, which can be formulated in different ways and geometries. And in particular, we have studied the integrable triple well model, the, the triple well in the integrable and the non-integrable cases, in the resonant regime. And we show how these systems can be controlled between various switch-on and switched-off configurations using external fields. And these results open possibilities in the discussion of atomtronic switching devices. So what we are going to study next, we are going to study the quantum dynamics with different initial conditions. We also want to compare and contrast the behaviors for open and closed systems. In particular, we want to understand what is the uh, difference in the physical scenario in the case of the open and for open and closed for uh, well chain first. We also want to investigate the possibility of other applications for the four wells and five wells and so on. And we also want to investigate the effects of breaking integrability in these models through a periodic driving. Then we could also apply the Floquet theory. So uh, now I would like to thank my collaborators. And all here are the, my collaborators and also my students. This is a group in Porto Alegre. So this work was performed mainly by Kari here the first girl here from the right to the left. So this is part of her PhD student. She has worked very hard in this project. 
Uh, also, Leandro and Arley, this, Leandro, this is Leandro and this is Arley. They are from a small university in the countryside, uh, Universidade de Bagé, in Brazil. And also John Lynx, he's uh, my collaborator from the University of Queensland. And this will make a kind of workshop with all the students. And this is a team in Porto Alegre. Somebody asked me, I, uh, many people asked me where is Porto Alegre now, just uh, that you go and uh, have the impression that you understood something from the talk. Uh, I will show Porto Alegre, so Porto Alegre is here. This is in south of Brazil, very south, so it's in the state of Rio Grande do Sul. Natal is in the state Rio Grande do Norte. We are in south of Brazil, below São Paulo, below uh, Rio de Janeiro, close to Uruguay and Argentina. And it's a very nice city if you go there. Uh, we have a very nice green park called Redenção. We have a beautiful sunset, very famous. We have two football teams. I just put mine, of course. And we, have, uh, we are a land of gauchos. We have lots of barbecue. So if you want to go to Porto Alegre, this could be something interesting to do. OK, thank you very much for your attention. OK, time for questions. You had the interactions, these dipolar interactions, which were looked rather um, fixed. There were only plus and minus signs. Plus signs, I think, between uh, the wells belonging to the same